So this is the beginning of a new chapter and we're going to focus on global markets. What we're going to look at is we're going to look at how markets work with international trade considered. We're going to look at how international trades, uh, how it's similar to a game and we're going to identify the potential gains and its winners and losers. And we're going to look at the international trade barriers. Now, because we trade with people in other countries, the goods and services that we can buy and consume are, are not limited by what we can produce. And there's two things that I want to look at here, and those are imports and exports. Now, imports are the goods and services that we buy from people in other countries, and exports are the goods and services that we sell to people in other countries. And uh, just so you know, global trade today is enormous. Um, global exports and imports were $35 trillion in 2008, which is more than half the value of the global production. So that will give you like an idea of how big global trade really is. But what the question that we really want to answer is why, what drives international trade? Why trade internationally? Well, the fundamental force that generates trade between nations is comparative advantage. And that's what I have here in green. And the basis for comparative advantage comparative trade is the divergent opportunity cost between countries. No country is good at everything. Each country has something that they're best at. And a national comparative advantage is uh, the ability of a nation to perform an activity or produce a good at service at a lower opportunity cost than any other nation. And each nation should have a national comparative advantage, something they're good at. For example, the opportunity costs of making jeans are lower in China than they are in Canada or in anywhere else. So China has a comparative advantage in producing jeans. As another example, the opportunity cost of producing lumber is lower in Canada than in China. In Canada, we have a heck of a lot of trees. That's why producing lumber is so much lower in Canada than anywhere else, specifically in British Columbia, where I live. So Canada has a comparative advantage in producing lumber. So you can see here, you have these great drawings here that China has a comparative advantage in producing lumber, China comparative advantage in producing jeans. Both countries win. Both countries gain from trade via specializing on the good that they have a comparative advantage in and then trading. So what Canada will do is that they'll specialize in lumber and China will specialize in jeans and then they'll trade. So let's say like Canada, oh, I have my highlighter's on. Let's just, so Canada buys uh, jeans from China or no, the air was going on the wrong way direction. So they sell lumber to China. Canada sells lumber to China just fix that and China sells jeans to Canada and that's pretty much global trade now let's go through uh, equilibrium with no international trade at first so this graph shows demand and supply in Canada with no international trade you can see right away that the price of a pair of jeans is uh, eight dollars as you can see here and Canadian firms produce 4 million jeans a year and Canadian consumers buy 4 million jeans a year. And you can see that with the, the intersection of the supply and demand curve and that the quantity bought equals the quantity to produce. Now, now let's look at, let's pop in some international trade and then let's look at what will happen. Well, the world demand and the world supply of jeans, they determine the world price of jeans to be five dollars so what we will do is we'll just have a line here and this will be our world price for jeans so this let me get my pen so this is our world price for jeans the world price is less than eight dollars so the rest of the world actually has a comparative advantage in jeans production that means that the world uh, not canada but other foreign countries they are better at producing jeans than canada is 
So with international trade, the price of jeans falls to $5. And at $5 per jean, Canadian firms would make 2 million jeans per year. And let me just get my line here again. They would make 2 million jeans per year. Let's just make that dotted. They would make 2 million jeans a year. And at $5 per jeans, uh, Canadian consumers would actually buy 6 million jeans per year. Line's not straight, but just imagine that they were straight. So Canada actually imports 4 million jeans per year. And we'll just show that here. Change colors. So, so this difference between the six and the four million and the two million genes is the the amount imported. So this would be the quantity, which I'll label Q, quantity imported. And this six would be the quantity bought. Two would be two million would be the quantity produced. Now we know that with that with the world price the quantity produced actually fell so the supply actually decreased to 2 million from 4 and the quantity bought actually increased which is the demand from 4 million to 6 million and as well the price falls because before when it was domestic the price was eight dollars but, but now it's five bucks because the world demand and world supply determined genes to be worth five dollars and that's where I'll leave us off at uh, in the next video we'll talk about why Canada exports lumber but other than that please rate comment subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time